This morning, I believe that I have a word where God wants to lead his people. For those who are listening on YouTube, for those who are in the congregation this morning, you all look beautiful. Amen. I'm telling you, it, there's an excitement, there's an element, there's a presence in this place this morning. But Habakkuk chapter 3, it's in the Old Testament, verse 17. I want to start with that and we're going to go into the word. I won't be long before you. And it reads like this, Habakkuk chapter 3, Habakkuk capítulo 3, versículo 17. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there is no fruit on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stall, yet... I will triumph in the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord God of my salvation. Yahweh, my Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like those of a deer and enables me to walk on mountain heights. How many know it's difficult to walk up a mountain, but he will equip us in this season. He will position us in this season to walk with hind feet like a deer, like a gazelle. Like if you've ever seen a goat climbing up a mountain with ease, he shall cause you to walk up your mountains and triumph in everything that you face. Father, we thank you for this word being manifested this morning. We thank you for those who are here and are hearing the word, Father, that we not only hear it, but we apply it and run with it, Lord. Today, Lord, that the manifestations occur in our life. Position us in such a way so we can know that you are near to see your face and see your hands at work in your precious name. We pray, amen and amen. In this election year, we have seen people express their political position. You don't have to go too far. You don't have to search the Democratic or Republican website. All you have to do is go on Facebook, and you'll see the positions that people are taking in this season. Some of those positions, uh, some stand or are based on moral issues, and others may be civil rights. But clearly, positions, clearly the line, the, the, the line in the sand has been declared and has been taken. There are those who are vocal and others who are inter internal. There are positions that are temporal and there are others that are permanent. There are people who are very vocal in the positions that they are taking in this season. Vocal in their political position, vocal in their position at work, vocal in their position in their life and, and they have it clearly planned out, planned out what they wanna do in the next five, 10, 15 years. But there are those, and maybe those are here this afternoon that are internal in their position. They may not express it, but they are definite in knowing where they stand. They may not express their plans and their visions and their dreams, but they know that they have presented them in front of the Lord. We take positions based on current situations. We'll take a position based how we're feeling that morning. We'll take a position based on our experiences and our circumstances. Many of our positions are determined based upon how we've grown up and what we have been taught. But there are times where our position must be immovable, certain, and for sure. We can waver in our position. Many I've seen on CNN a couple of weeks back that the people that four years ago had voted for Trump, they had taken a different position. And those who had voted Democrat had changed their position based on the experience based on the last four years that they've had to endure. Some positions can change from overnight. You may be happy, and then your position changes because of a circumstance or what you're going through. But in this season, there is a position that you must take. There is a position that must be immovable, unshakable, and stable in its place. Yeah. Yeah. See, there are those who are like the rich man, who was fine in following, quote unquote, the trend. He was okay following the crowd. He was okay following the statues in Moses' law. He was okay in the position that he obtained. He wanted to go where the flow was going. He wanted to go where social media in those days was heading. He was okay with following Bible studies and okay coming to church and we were putting him in this season, in this area. He was okay following Jesus as the crowd did, being in the now and eager to buy in into the position. But the moment, Mark chapter 10, verse 17 to 21, Jesus told him, 
situation will try to tell you that it's not going to happen. It will try to tell you that there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle on the mountain. But there is a position that you must take that no matter what you see, no matter what happens around you, yet I know that my God and my Redeemer lives. See, it's easy to come to church. It's easy to sing and fellowship. The position is easy. There is no accountability in particular, and I'm not knocking bigger churches, but it's, it's not a big issue. It's not a big deal in the position that you take because, see, on Sunday morning, everybody gathers to fellowship. Everybody gathers to see who's there and who's not there. Everybody gathers to see who will be worshiping and who will be leading worship and what they're wearing and what they're doing and the status quo. See, it's easy to come to church and fellowship and sing and even, even worship. But the moment Jesus asked him to change his position, he couldn't. The moment Jesus tries your faith, the moment you are tested in your circumstance, the moment that you are tested in your experience will be the determining factor if you will see the manifestation of God. See, when I looked up the definition of position, and there are four definitions of position. It is a location where something is at. When something is positioned, it is in a particular location. Another definition is a particular way something is placed. Uh, you like to position your couch in a certain way. If you come to my house every three or four months, the positions of our couches in our living room will change. The position of our bedrooms will change because Randy has a tendency to like not see things the same way. He likes to see it in a different perspective. See, it's a position is a particular way you place something. You know when something is what? Out of position because somebody has moved it from its one location to a next. Uh, a position is a situation or circumstance that affects one's power to act. Uh, see, if you are in a particular position, you have the ability to affect certain people. See, a mayor has the ability to affect a city, but a governor has the position to affect the state. And four, definition of particular point of view. What is your position in the season we're about to embark? What is your point of view and your location and your position and your particular setting of where God is taking us? See, we all understand that God can heal. Even the doctors know it, that there is a possibility of a miracle to occur. We all understand that God can set people free. We see it. We see people recover. We see people be uh, addicted free or, 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 or have been sober for five, seven, ten years, five, six, seven months. Uh, we know that people can be set free. People can be delivered. We know that breakthrough is inevitable. We know that God's desire for us is to break through the chains, right? To break through what we're going through, to overcome, to, to have victory in his name. We all know that. We have been taught this. It's been fixated in our mind. Even as children, our kids know right from wrong. Whether they abide in that position, whether they take the position of truth and honor or take a position of lie, they know the difference. Huh? Don't let it fool you. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. Don't let the appearance and the crying and the wine fool you. I know when my son is lying. I know when my daughter is lying. It's the movements. It's the positions they take. We are fixated. We know the truth. In our mind, we know right from wrong. In our mind, we know what God truly desires for us. Come on, we may see, you know, Lord, in this season, what, what is my assignment and what, what do you want me to do? But in our minds, we know that God just wants us to surrender. We know that all he wants us to do is to submit to him. We know, we know the problem is not getting to the destination. The problem is the process. The problem is how do we get here? It's not where we're going to end up when we have a relationship with God. It's like the in between. But are we positioned? Are we set in place? Our point of view, our location, position that he can deliver, set us free. See, we wonder why some people get healed and others don't got, don't, don't get healed. We under, understand why God can deliver somebody in an instant and for others it may take here. My synopsis or my theory is, are we positioned? Uh, 
when we are babes, that's one thing. But when we are mature, people have been coming to church and serving the Lord for years. We should know the position that we take. We should know and trust God. But sometimes the enemy tries to shift us out of our position. We know that he can heal us, but are we positioned to receive his healing? We know that he can deliver us, but are we positioned that we can heal? He can deliver us. We know that he'll manifest and we see bits and trickles and, and, and little spurts of his manifestation, but are we positioned to receive the overflow? Are we positioned to receive the full manifestation, the rain that comes down from his power? Are we positioned? See, you can be positioned in the field, in the proximity, and area, and even location, but are you positioned to catch the ball? There are people on a football field. There are team players. There are players on both sides on a football field. But if you are not positioned to receive the ball, if you are not positioned to catch the ball, the person can throw the ball. But if you are not in the right position, if you are not following the game plan, and you are over here when you need to be over here, it is a 100% certainty that you won't catch the ball. You're in the area. You're in the proximity. You are in the location and you are in the field. But if you are not positioned, you won't catch the ball. Are you positioned to hear? Are you positioned to respond? You can be positioned in the church. A lot of people have positions in church, amen? Amen. I've been to churches where there's only 100 members and we have 20 deacons and 30 mothers and 40 prophets and, and 22 uh, 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 ushers. And are you positioned? Everybody can have a position in church. But are you positioned to answer the call? Are you positioned? Have you prepared yourself to receive the position and the location that God has purposed you to have? In hearing the word, are you positioned to respond? Are you positioned to praise? Are you in the position to shift where he says shift? Move where he says move. And go where he says go. And let go what he says let go. See, it's one thing to be in the church. But when he calls us to let go of some things. And, and let go of some people. And let go of some ideologies. And let go of some ideas and thoughts how things should be. And where you should be right now. Are you positioned to let it go? See, Mary, Mary and Martha were in the proximity of Jesus. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, you can read it. It says that Mary and Martha were in the house that Jesus was going to attend. It says that Mary and Martha had welcomed Jesus in her house, in the same, in their house. It says here that Mary and Martha were in the proximity of Jesus, uh, in the same location. Matter of fact, they were in relationship with Jesus. Jesus wasn't just a visitor that was coming in to preach on a weekend. He wasn't a visitor that they would see from time to time. No, they were in proximity. They were in relationship with Jesus. But Mary was in position. Verse 40 says, that Martha was distracted by all the preparation that she had to do. The Bible says that as Martha and Mary were preparing for Jesus' arrival and, for, and to tend to Jesus, the Bible says that Martha got so upset. She was in the proximity of Jesus. She was in relationship with Jesus. She was in the same location with Jesus. The same Jesus that fed the 5,000. The same Jesus that kept, that told the people to the disciples to go and catch the fish and catch the fish. They were in the same relationship. She saw the miracle signs and wonders, but she was not in position with Jesus. In so much that Martha said, Jesus, can you go get Mary? See, she's, I'm doing all this work and I'm getting all the food ready and I'm, I'm getting ready for people to come and Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus. See, you may be in his proximity, but are you in position with Jesus. See, Martha was distracted by all the preparation to be made. Lord, do you not care that Mary is not helping? But this really moved 
be. Verse 42 says, but one thing is necessary. Jesus told him, see, you're doing all these things. You're, you're, you're preparing the food and you're cleaning the house and you're getting everything ready for to receive Jesus in your personal space. But there is one thing that you're lacking. You may be in my proximity, but you are not positioned to receive what I have for you. See, there is a difference between you, Martha, and Mary. See, Mary is at the feet of my feet. Mary is at the feet of Jesus. She was at his feet in attention. Her position bothered many, but it was what he wanted. Let me tell you, in this season, you will be positioned in places where people will be bothered. You will be in a position where you have to say no when they thought you would say yes. You may be in a position where you're not able to go out and hang anymore. You're not able to be in their proximity. You're not able to be in their location. But needless to say, your position will determine your manifestation. It is your position that will make you believe. See, see, let me tell you the difference between Mary and Martha, and I'll let you go this afternoon, this morning. See, when Lazarus died, this was a revelation that, that Pastor Randy, I was like, this is crazy. See, when Lazarus died, it was Martha who ran to Jesus and said, if you were here, he would have not died. But what grabbed my attention when reading this scripture, see, it says that when Lazarus died and they gave notice to Jesus, it was Martha who ran and told Jesus, if you were here sooner, he would have not died. But what was interesting to me in the book of John chapter 11, but it says in the scripture that Mary stayed at home. Could it be that Mary knew that the relationship that Jesus and Lazarus had meant something to Jesus? Did Mary possibly know that at the feet of Jesus, she really knew and felt Jesus' heart? Is it a possibility that the reason why Mary stayed at home and did not run after Jesus because she knew sooner or later he would arrive. See, Mary knew that Jesus would come. She knew he would raise Lazarus. Was she worried? Yes. Was she sad? Yes. But her position was that he is on his way. You see, she knew him and he knew her. She had her moment. If you read verse 32, it says that when Jesus when they were trying to comfort Mary in the house, the Bible says that the Jews came and tried to comfort Mary. And it says, abruptly, Mary got up. <laughs> Mary got up. And when she got up abruptly, the Jews said, oh, she went to go grieve at the, uh, at the, at the burial of her son, of her, of her brother, rather. But they did not know that when Mary abruptly got up, she ran after Jesus. Did she have her moment? She had her moment. And I'll tell you why that she had her moment. Because when she had, when she went to Jesus and ran to Jesus, the Bible said that she said the very same thing that Martha said. If you would have been here, he would have not died. And if you read that chapter, this is what's interesting. I'm trying to teach you something this morning. What was interesting, that when Martha said it to Jesus, there is no indication that Jesus was bothered. It was no indication that Jesus turned around. There was no indication that Jesus cried or was upset. But the moment Mary came to him and said to him, Jesus, if you were to have come, he would have not died. The Bible says that it troubled Jesus. It said that it bothered Jesus and he wept. The reason is because the difference between Martha and Mary was how she said it. Her position was she was at the feet of Jesus and she was concerned that maybe this was too hard for God. Maybe this was too hard 
for Jesus to, to show forth and manifest a miracle. But she also knew that the same Jesus that talked and walked and preached was the same Jesus that could have the possibility to change and raise her brother from the dead. There was a connection that Mary had with Jesus that Martha did not have. Everyone can say he can do it, but only those who are in position know it. Yes. Everybody can say we need a savior, but only those who are positioned can say, I know my redeemer lives. Verse 42, but because the people which were standing by in position may believe. The reason why, see, see Lazarus' destiny was already secure. Lazarus' position, he had already passed on and went on to glory. But the Bible says in verse 42 that the reason why Jesus manifested this miracle in Lazarus' life is because the people were standing by and positioned so that they would believe. There are some things that maybe have not been in the plan. There are some bigger things that I don't want to say that Jesus had in store for you. But there are some things that are kind of impossible and kind of crazy and out there. But because you are positioned by Jesus, he will answer your call. See, Elijah, Elijah was never commanded or never told to throw water on the sacrifice. But because he was positioned to believe the word of God, God him and cause it to burn up. Are you positioned this morning for the manifestation in 2020? Pastor Randy, we can say a lot of things, but are we positioned to receive the manifestation? Well, Pastor Carmen, how can I be positioned? Get on your knees and begin to thank God. When Pastor Randy was asking God, asking us to, to open up our mouth and begin to ask God and believe God for certain things, I said, God, make my walk with you be so are positioned so that you may believe. Amen. Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for your word. Stand up on your feet this morning as a sign of position. Hallelujah. Lord, that your manifestations in your word will come forth in our lives. Jesus. We thank you, God, this morning that, Lord, that we are not too distracted and so caught up and what is going on in our lives right now and what could have been and what should have been that we are not positioned to see you. Help us to be lined up with your word. Help us to see the manifestations occur, Lord Father. That in this season that we're about to embark on, Lord, that I don't see everybody else's manifestations occur and not mine. I want to see it for myself, Father, which it means if I have to leave them, I'm positioned. If I have to keep my mouth quiet, I'm positioned, Lord Father. If I have to make some changes in my life, I am positioned, Lord Father. If I have to make career changes, I am positioned for your manifestations to occur, Lord Father. Lord, I just don't want to be a church attender, but I want to be the church. Father, I just don't want to see, uh, be a deliverance carrier. I want to be the deliverance. Lord, Father, that I just don't sing. Father, but I sing out of experience and the position that you have brought me to, Father. That our ministry, that our life, that our walk, that our talk. Father, there's some things that we have to take a position on. There are decisions. I hear the Holy Spirit say there are some positions that are going to cost you a lot of pain. But make that position. Cause that position to be immovable and stable. 
when we know that there's something wrong and, and something is not good for our children or for our loved ones, we are adamant and intentional on saying no. There are some seasons where your position will have to be no. Father, but I thank you in every position that we place ourselves, that you place us in, that Lord, that your glory may be revealed. In your precious name we pray. Amen and amen. How many